Hi everyone, welcome back to Irish Footy Vlogs. This week I'm joined by Jamie, as we all know, who's a massive Pats fan. And making his debut on the show is Ushi McLaughlin, who's a massive Harps fan. Lads, how are we? Yeah, all good, Dad. How are you? I'm Dad. How are you? Good stuff. I'm good. Ushi, we'll just start with you. You obviously run the Finna Harps Supporters Group that's on Facebook. It's a new page, and it's great to see new pages come onto Facebook, like places where clubs can come together and fans can be together in one platform. George, tell us a bit about your page. Yeah, so basically just taking, uh, you know, taking basically uh, from the Bose idea, the Bose fan group, popular Bose fan group, thought, you know, it'd be good for Harps and basically just, a, you know, a fan page set up, you know, for all things related with Harps, uh, whether it be underage, uh, senior and so on. So, yeah, I just set it up and, yeah, it's, it's, it's going rightly. It's just started up there last month. And, uh, yeah, if you want to join it, just go on Facebook. It's a Harps fan group. And, yeah, you can check it out and, and see all things Harps. That's brilliant, Oshin. And it's a great page, lads. I joined it there recently. I, I gave Oshin a hand setting it up and he's done very, very well since he started running it by himself. He runs it all by himself and he's doing very well. There's, I think there's 430 in it now, mm. which is really yeah. good for a page. It's, what, six weeks old. Um, Excellent stuff. I and mean, it's for everyone too. And it's a good page. So definitely check it out if you want to join the other League of Ireland pages. So... I think we'll start off with the probably best results out of the week. Um, actually, before we do start that, I will mention that the Bows and Derry match was postponed, and I think Bows have like, I think they've got four games. I think it is to be rescheduled. One against Harps as well. Um, a lot of games to be rescheduled for Bows. Bows are currently fifth with thirty four points. Obviously, Derry now to get that game rescheduled with Bows and Derry are fourth on thirty seven points. So just to get that out of the way, that's where Bows are at the minute. Um. Obviously, it's great for both. We had a lot of internationals. That's why our game got postponed. So, moving into the best result then, I think, of the week yeah. was Finn Harps 2, Shamrock Rovers 1. Muslow with the goal in the 57th minute. Foley got an own goal, I believe, in the 70th minute. And then Tunde won the game for Harps in the 85th minute with a great finish. And he's after really coming for his own. Oshin, obviously, you're the Harps man. You take us through this game. Yeah, so it's another another one for Harps really. Um, coming into it, I didn't really show much faith to be honest. I was thinking, you know, five in the bounce is, is a great run for Harps, and I was thinking, you know, maybe you know sometime it has to come to an end. But yeah, it all really really wasn't with it. Another three points, and I think the first time we beat Channel Rovers since two thousand eight, uh, which is incredible. Um, really just you know a really good match, and we had the fans and behind us, and I think all they mentioned this week, um, or last week that. You know, since you know, it's no coincidence that since the fans came back into the grounds, the, the run of run of form has changed and so on with the two cup wins and you know the four other league wins. Um, so yeah, basically just great, a great, great three points. And you know, obviously Jordan Jordan Musso getting 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 the, his first of the first for the club, and you know, it was a great team move. You know, it was like Barcelona. Um, was, I think it was six or seven passes. You know, and one twos here and there and everywhere. And yeah, it was a great a great way to you know to to open up the second half. Um and then obviously then the, the own goal is a bit unfortunate. Um obviously when Shamrock Rovers are chasing the game, you know, they, they lost the body the bodies forward and you know there's it's it is hard to defend against them the way they play and it was just a bit unfortunate that the cross came in and then came off Adam Foley's head and nothing McGinley could do. Um so yeah it was one all and evenly balanced then for the last you know the last whatever half hour or whatever it was and yeah, Harps basically just snabbed it. 85th minute of the day and another great move down the down the right hand side and and uh Foley got his got his head on a on a cross and yeah, won the game for Harps and yeah, it's you know it's it's really it's really incredible, yeah. Excellent. Jamie, what did you make of that result? You know, two one win for Harps against Shamrock Rovers. A lot of people would have tipped Rovers for this and I don't really blame them. Of course, yeah. I could take a pause this week. Last week, I, I tipped Harp to get something out of this game. I was sure they might do something. And it's typical Ollie Horgan getting to this end of the season, the business end, when you need results. And what a run Harps are on. And he's really turned it around. Yeah, I back Harps as well, actually. You know, every year, Ollie Horgan seems to go on this mad run towards the end of the season and just, you know, somehow managed to, to get points for Harps. And he's done it again. And I think this is probably more impressive than any season, really, because he had a great escape last year. But he started this run maybe five or six games earlier than he would usually. So if I can keep this going to the end of the year, suddenly they're very, very safe. And you have to look at other teams in the league to maybe uh, match Finn Harp's form if they want to stay up and stay out of that playoff. But um, the game itself, 
Um, of course, you have to look at Robert there a bit short at the back, and they had to maybe switch things around a little bit. But that said, look, it has to go to Harps. Um, I thought Will Seymour played amazing in the middle. I'm not sure what uh, Osh thinks of him, but he was amazing. Uh, really dictated the midfield, and you know, against the Rovers midfield, that's very, very hard to do. And try to hope it, you know, they're brilliant. Adam Foley, I know he got his own goal up and down that line on the right, or when he goes on top, I think he's also been very good this season. Uh, you also had Tunde Avalabi scoring a goal. He's on some form at the minute. Obviously, he had a very good game against Pats, they all like to forget, but uh, yeah, brilliant game. So it's all looking very good for Harps at the minute, and they want to be keeping this form going. So, Oshin, obviously, you know, like everything that Jamie said there is spot on. Like, you know, Tunde has really come with the form of his own at the start of the season. He wasn't really, wasn't really doing much. He was just there. He was kind of lingering around. But as of late, he's really coming to form. He's getting his, you know, he's getting on the goal sheet quite a lot now. Or if he's not getting goals, he's setting one up. And he's he's definitely fitting in on that Finn Harps team. What do you make of his season so far? Yeah, well, as you said, he had a, he had a slow start. Um, and there's, there's no denying that there, you know, I think. He was, he was getting into offside positions, you know, you know, a, a lot of a lot of the matches like so it wasn't really it wasn't really working out for him. But he is a handful, you know, he makes himself a handful. He's pacey, and you know he gets right into the face of the defenders. Now it has to be said that that the new new sign in for Shamrock Rovers, Cotter, done very well, you know, on Friday night to keep him at bay for the majority of the match. But uh, yeah, what he on now six goals this season. Obviously the hat trick against against Pats, which we, we can't go without mentioning, you know, and then, uh, yeah, so, yeah, hopefully just continues the form, and um, the way Hartley's playing now, he's playing up top, and Adam Foley's on the right wing, um, which is, yeah, a system that seems to be working at the minute, although I would like to see the two up top, um, but, yeah, Ollie seems to, as, as Jamie said, pulls it out of the bag at the right times of the season, and, you know, it's always said that after the mid-season break, Harps always go on this run. Well, it's good that we have the points from the start of the season, the good start that we had, the 10 points in the four games. And, you know, it's just it's just a matter of hopefully just keeping keeping the wrong going. Derry in the Cup on Friday, Friday night, and then obviously a couple of league matches coming up too. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how the, how the lads get on and hopefully continue to keep the momentum going. Obviously, Jamie Oshin would know about this. Harps were rifled with injuries throughout the season. They had an awful lot of injuries, especially at the back end. I think ever since players like Seymour and McElhenney and all of them have come back, I think Harps kind of got the core group of players together and they're showing, I think they're trying, they're starting to show what kind of form they had at the start of the season. Yeah, I think the base for Finn Harps this season has been Siddiqui and Webster. I think they've been amazing. They allow the other players to really press on and do all their amazing work. And I think, you know, they really are underappreciated in the league. Siddiqui and Webster, as I'm sure she knows, they're both so good. They both really complement each other as well. And I think um, you look at Harps, and, you know, we say it all the time, they're very hard. It's a very hard club to uh, bring in players you know, all the way up in the Northwest. But, you know, you look at Webster, who obviously got released by Pat, and um, Horgan brings him in, and he's been amazing. And Siddiqui, I think he was at uh, Hayes, was it Hayes in Scotland? He's yeah. come in, brilliant again. So that just shows, you know, although the, the group of players that he can maybe attract is um, limited, whoever he does bring in, they're right for the job all the time. He's really got it right this season. And it shows, you know, there's been a few injuries. Players have stepped in and they've really, you know, stood up to the task. And they have Harps in a good spot again this year. Yeah, and I have to say it too, Oshie, I'm very happy that Harps stuck with Ali Corgan and didn't think of getting rid of him. And I'm happy the fans, from what I can see, mostly did back Ali and knew he would get the bus back driving correctly again. And yeah. he seems to have done that time and time again. Yeah, that's it too. Like, I mean, he's been there. I think he's, I think he's, he's the longest serving manager in the league. I think Keith Long is second. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's see the thing, the kind of situation is if if Ollie was to go, who would you bring in? You know, <coughs> I mean, who would be who would be really interesting coming to the to the beautiful Northwest? You know, to manage and um, but yeah, it's really it's really kind of turned. Um, obviously, there's fans calling some fans. You know, they've been calling for his head. Uh, when we were in that rough patch, but. Um, yeah, it's really, it's really, uh, you know, coming together for them now, and hopefully continue it. Um, we comment on Will Seymour. I think Harps kind of lacked that kind of cutting edge in midfield over the past few years, and also when with Seymour coming in from Sligo at the start of the season, um, it's really, you know, it's really worked wonders for Harps and balls across the pitch, and you know, switching the play and Seymour, you know, Seymour and Mark Coyle in the middle of the of the park have really anchored that midfield. 
obviously, um, very true, Oshin. Obviously, look, Jamie, for Rovers, it's not the end of the world losing against Harps. Like, you know, a, a few losses here and there are bound to come. They're inevitable. It's going to happen to everyone. Obviously, Rovers are having this terrific season. The top of the league, the 50 points, you know, they're absolutely sailing forward with the league. They probably have, without most doubts, have won the league this early on. Uh, there's still a lot of games to play, a lot of football to come. And the top with 50 points, and they also have two games in hand. So they, they've an awful lot to play for. And then, you know, Harps, have, they're up to seventh. They've 32 points. They look like they're going to be safe. So. Um, look, that's great to see. And obviously, Max Murphy came in then for Rovers as well. What did you make of his performance? He's obviously a very young player. Yeah, brilliant. Um, I think with Rovers, because they have such quality and such good depth, it's hard for young players to break through. Uh, but that just shows how good Max Murphy is and how highly he's ranked by everyone at Rovers. You know, he can play left wing back and right wing back. Uh, very good player. Uh, confident on the ball. And it, like I said it's a credit that he's still at the team and he hasn't been loaned out because when you look at players like um dean williams uh <laughs> dean williams and uh Ola Labby, oh, Labby, uh yeah. Ola Wu, um who obviously left right. rovers yeah it, it's a credit that you know bradley puts trust in max murphy and really he's paid back whenever he's played it he's been amazing um, and he offers another option you know like i said they're a bit short at the back and he's come in and he's stepped up again he's making a headache for um Stephen Bradley for next year, you know, does he loan him out? Does he keep him? And um, we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, definitely still up to play today. Yeah, definitely. It's good to see young players getting tuned to the club level in the league and obviously step up and played well for over. So that's great to see. Um, moving on into the next game we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about Pats 3, Longford 2. Um, King got the, got the first goal for Pats at 29 minutes and then Forrester 66, Burns 87, obviously seals the win late on. And for Longford, Williams got a goal in the 51st minute, which levelled the game at 1 1. And then very late on in the game, in the 90 plus 5, I think it's even 6 minute, uh, Connor Davis, I think he's a central midfielder, got the goal late on for Longford. Obviously, Jamie, um, you can take us through this one. What did you make of this one? And obviously, you know, you might have been a bit nervous, but Longford hanging in there for quite some time and, you know, coming back late on as well. Yeah. Uh, it was actually a very, very good game to watch, I have to say. Um, five goals, obviously. Um, very good football. I think we say it uh, almost every week, guys, but Longford they always play good football and maybe just lack that cutting edge to really grind out a result. And you can maybe say this is another time where they just lacked uh, maybe a tiny bit extra to really get a point in this game. But looking at the game overall, it probably started pretty even uh, with neither team probably having any clear-cut chances. And then... Uh, in the first half, Big King uh, opened the score, an amazing goal. Uh, he got the ball with space maybe 25 yards out, and he strikes it beautifully into the top left. It was an amazing goal, I have to say. Great goal. Cool. Um, yeah, probably one of the best this season for Pats, in my opinion. And then, you know, Pats keep putting on pressure. And uh, to be fair to Longford, they were solid. They were solid at the back, and uh, they always looked dangerous, I have to say. And like I said, obviously, Williams got the goal. Um, good goal uh, from a free kick in my opinion um, I think it was a free kick I think the ball was kicked out of Barry Murphy's hands before but uh, of course I'm very very biased so we'll leave that out but uh, yeah good goal from Dean Williams and you know overall I was starting to get a bit nervous then I have to say um, there are tons in the game where Harris had an overload in our half which was really really nerve wracking uh, Paddy Barrett had to make a tackle when he was 4 on 1 at the back which is not something you want to see, but anyway, he won the tackle and uh, played a great ball into Chris Forrester, who laid it off for Dara Burns, um, who actually celebrated with Keen Mendes, and he was obviously regularly on the show, so <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Um, but yeah, overall, confident performance by Pats, considered last minute, obviously, literally last kick of the game from a corner, which um, would have had me nervous if it, was, if it was five minutes earlier, but uh, professional by Pats, and obviously we're always dropping points. Um, it's three points gained for parts of the title race. So, obviously, too, Jamie, there, you said that um, Longford actually defended pretty okay, but they still conceded three goals. Do you think it's more mm. down to individuals or a team effort? Yeah, yeah, individuals, definitely. You'll have to look at the individuals here. Like Dara Doyle, he hasn't done anything wrong this season, in my opinion. Like, he set them up in an organised way. Um, but yeah, it just seems that every time these little errors, whether it be from a set piece or a counter attack, they're really costing them points and they look like they're down and out now, I have to say. 
very good stuff. So, Oshin, you know, look at Longford, the bottom of the table, 11 points. It's not looking good. No, I think the, I think the race is run now. Yeah, this is a bit of a pity so early in the season. Um, and, you know, as Jamie mentioned there, it's, it is a bit hard on them too. I mean, I know with Shamrock Rovers, I think it was three matches where they conceded like in the 95th, 94th, whatever, you know, they con- conceded late goals. And that's kind of been the story of their season. Um, they put in gutsy performances, but it's just they just you know they just you know ran short really, and I mean I don't I can't see them making much of a, an effort now for the for the rest of the season. It is a good opportunity for the players in the squad, even the younger players, to kind of showcase themselves in the remaining league games. Um, you know, and possibly maybe making a move, maybe you know next season, wherever. Um, but yeah, it's just it's a bit it's a bit of a pity. Um, you also want to see. Teams been, you know, the league being as competitive as it is, you know, it's competitive at the top this year. You know, you'd like to see it at the bottom. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just a bit of a bit of a pity for all the Longford, you know, Longford fans. You know, they done so well to beat Shells in the playoff last year, and yeah, I think it. Personally speaking, I think it's curtains for for me. Yeah, definitely. And um, Jamie, you know, eleven points. It's it's a very low point tally to have this late on in the season. Drops the rock bottom, and I don't really see them getting out of being rock bottom. Should they continue with the manager in charge or look to freshen the team up and the manager for next season? Um, I think they should keep the manager. I think um, when you look at the start of the season, I think everyone had Longford probably finishing last. And, you know, they were recruitment probably wasn't there. Um, brought in Paddy Kirk, who was obviously a good signing. But compared to Drada, who also came up, it was really night and day um, in terms of recruitment. And um, whether that be Darrod couldn't attract the players or Longford didn't have the budget, we don't know. But um, bit of both maybe. Yeah, maybe. But I think in the first division, Darrod um is up there with one of the best managers in the league. I think he they should really keep him. Um, he can grind that results. Obviously, it hasn't happened too much in the Premier Division. But last time they were in the first division, they sneak sneaked into the playoffs and then obviously got promoted. So that just shows you know at that level he's more than good enough. So. I'd stick with him for next season and see where it takes uh, Longford. You know, if they need to make a change maybe through the season, and that can be done. Yeah, definitely. And you know, Pats are second with fifty points, right behind Rovers. So they've put an awful lot of pressure on Rovers. Rovers actually need to win their next two games in hand if they are to remain first. And you know, like it's not like they're running away with the league anymore. Obviously, they're at the very top, and they have six points they can play for to create another gap, but. There was a gap towards the start of the season that's been you know, quickly filled by Pats and obviously showing pressure they've been putting on Machine. Yeah, and that's that's it. Like it's it is it's good to see too. I mean, you don't want you know you don't want a Man City happening you know in our league where they run away with the league or you know in the past years PSD or so on and in league on or whatever. But like it's good to see that Pats have have you know taken the opportunities when when Rovers drop points wherever it may be. You know it's good to see that. Uh, and Pats are, are, you know, winning and, uh, you know, keeping the pressure on and it'll be an interesting come up to the last round of games now. It'll be an interesting last nine nine matches for, for, for every team. Like, and it'll, it'll, be inter- it'll be exciting to watch. Yeah, definitely. So, um, moving on into the next one then, we have Waterford 1, Dundalk 1. Um, Murray scored on the fifth minute from Dundalk to give them an, a very early lead, which I thought they would capitalise on they looked comfortable early on they looks like they were putting on pressure and I thought they probably were going to get one over Warford in this game and obviously Wordsworth came on he was a very experienced very good player I think I rate him very highly I think he's you know he's had he's had his bis, bits of misfortune unfortunate stuff this season happened to him with referees and decisions going against him and red cards and all but you know he he got the goods in the end. He got the gold for Waterford and got them a point. Um, seventy-seven minute, and they stayed on. And this put Dundalk into ninth position. Jamie, like they are having like a shocker of a season. Yeah, I think for for weeks now, people they saw Dundalk's position and they they can't get it in their head that they really are in the relegation battle. And I think this result just shows that they really are. Like, that second half, especially, I don't think I've ever seen a Dundalk team play that bad in years. Like. They were talking, um, and it just shows maybe the contrast. Um, Bertram was able to ride up the stairs at half time and really have them going at the dock in the second half. Whereas the dock maybe took their foot off the gas and they really 
and just sat back and sort of hoped that they could, you know, sit through the, the storm and maybe uh, come out with a one another win. But, you know, a team like the Dock, they shouldn't really be playing like that. With their budget, with, you know, their manager, everything, it's, it would really make you question what's going on because obviously now they've changed manager a lot and they're still bringing in loads of new players and nothing's working. So I'm sure people at the top of, at the Dock will be getting very nervous now and... And um, we'll have to wait and see, you know. These next few games are huge for them, dogs. They need to turn their fortunes around very quickly. Or um, they might find themselves in the playoff. Definitely. Um, Oshin, what did you make of this game overall? Obviously, Warford is a team that's down around at Dundalk's uh, area in the league. And I think they should have been looking to get points off them, full points if they wanted to pull themselves out where they are. What did you make of the game in general? Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's a, for Harps perspective, it's a good point, you know, <coughs> kinda, you know, getting a point each, whatever, and Harps winning, you know, which is it's good for Harps perspective. But yeah, to be honest, I um the recruitment of Waterford, um, they were in the big hole they were in, it was Longford and Waterford at the bottom, you know, at the start of the season, and they've really done well. Um, and bringing the new signings, as you said, uh, uh, Wordsworth and Ken Nolan and so on. Um, they've really really done well in the recruitment side of things, and you know, fair play to them. Um, yeah, and with Dundalk, uh, it's it's a tough one to crack. Um, I thought that you know, with Vanny Purse coming in, you know, he'd steady the ship. Um, we've seen a wee bit of that there in Europe, um, but not really much in the league. And yeah, I, I think it is. It's it's the harsh reality for Dun for Dundalk fans. They are in a relegation battle. Um, and I can see personally speaking, I, I can see Waterford getting out of it. You know, or the rather than than Dundalk. You know, um, I'd say. Yeah, Waterford would be disappointed not to not to, to pick up the three points here considering they've been on a good run. And yeah, they know Dundalk are, are free falling at the minute. So yeah, I'd say I'd say Waterford would be the, you know, the unhappier of the two teams. Jamie, that brings me on to my next point. Has Vinny Pert, in all honesty, made any difference to Dundalk since he's came in? Think of it now, they're ninth position, during relegation scrap. They are if Longford has any amount of points, not like more than they have they'd be fighting now towards the bottom of their ninth in the league. Like that's a shocking like them. I said it last week. Then the Dundalk players should hang their heads in shame. They're a disgrace at Dundalk football club. And the fans, I don't blame them. They must be absolutely depressed being a Dundalk fan right now. To go from the heights of where they were to where they are now, obviously it's not just just the manager's fault. Obviously the recruitment and the board and what have you above them kind of made the situation in a way. Could have went one or two ways. I really tipped them not to be doing well this season and they aren't. But just going back to the point, has Vinny Park made a difference for the Dock this season? Um, no, he hasn't. And that's as simple as that really, but in his defence, he he's not been given the freedom to make a difference. You look at some of the signings and I still don't think they're really per signings. You know, they're bringing in players from Europe, from Morocco and all these weird places and you really just think you know, is Vinnie Pert out here in Morocco looking at players for the other 23s? I don't think so. Um, that's a Bill Hussner signing. And, you know, you have to think, what the hell? Like, Jim Jilton, who was obviously, uh, was it the director of football? Was that his role? He is obviously gone now as well. They had to pay a huge money in his contract. Everything's gone wrong. And, you know, back to Vinnie Pert, you know, he, he's doing the best that he can. But, you know, for a manager that was seen maybe in his first season, to be taken on by some CVK and trying to keep them levels at the dock. He, he simply hasn't been able to do it. And it was always a tough, tough act to follow. And you see it you know, very, very often. A, a long-term manager leaves and they're so struggling. And in all fairness, Vinnie Burt, you know, hasn't got the, the backing of the, the board. And obviously that's why he left the first time. So it makes you scratch your head why he maybe came back. But at the end of the day, it was his decision to come back. And he does deserve a lot of blame for having done dark in on so no he didn't make a difference to answer your question that Jamie I fully agree with you I completely agree I it's very hard to see that the change parts me and a lot of Dundalk fans and people in general I for sure did think this as well that he was going to come in and turn him around I was I didn't think he's going to turn him back into winners overnight and he beat everyone in the league but I certainly thought he would make you know some kind of a change or an influence in them where They'd climb up the league and just be comfortable, not be relegation candidates. They'd be competitive in the league and you'd be worried playing against them and thinking, looking at them most, against most teams, you'd be thinking they'd probably get results. But right now, I think any other team in the league, even even long 
preferred respect to them would back themselves to either one give them a, a good competitive game or two beat them like you know i wouldn't really be fearing going up against the dog anymore there's certainly no near 11 teams that they were and Oshin, if you look at you to this team right like abibi and goals international player um i think his name is dasgard center back fair Isles international player mm-hmm. they obviously have um saibo the central midfielder and mls all-star who's, who's on Vensi as well who's on a report six seven grand a week like is it a disgrace where they are like what do you yeah. make it and what do you think uh, yeah i mean yeah the words of the dundalk fans ran like a circus you know it's, it basically is that you have not a stat as you mentioned you know i think it's fair islands you have your man Dracoskis on left back i mean these are these are they're good players you know they're, they're playing you know uh euro qualifier world cup qualifiers for the country like i mean I just can't understand how they, you know, they can't do it in, in the League Ireland. And with, with Sahibo, like, I watch a few Dundalk matches. It just looks like he just, you know, he just doesn't want to be there. You know, he's getting, he's sitting there, sitting on a good wage. And he, you know, he just, the kind of attitude, really, his attitude kind of stinks, really, to be honest. It's just, you know, he's not really bothered to run after balls and do work for the team. You know, it's a bit, it's a bit, you know, it's a, if I was a Dundalk fan, I'd be really frustrated. And as we've seen, you know, they could attack on you know the fan reaction videos on 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 the page you know and when he like he was really angry so frustrated you know and then when they won a game then he went off the off, off the head you know but like it's just the way it's gone with, with Dundalk it really is hard to believe it's it's about like you know you could you could make a comparison to Cork City you know the uh, the fallen giant you know and it's just I don't I don't know I think the only chance of getting into into Europe or some success this year is to win the cup but they have to get past hearts who are in hot in hot form now and they have to get past them first um before you know you can even think of that so jamie everything Oshin said there is, is spot on like i think this dundalk team to me anyway they appear to be a team of individuals individually these players they are good like they're not shite like they're not bad players they are good players on good money but they're just not clicking as a team and obviously it's been shown and highlighted throughout the season mistakes attitude players not tackling hard enough not tracking back no rock rate no desire in the team there's no fire in the bellies the players just simply just look like they just don't care and they're down they're down ninth like you know i i still looking at the table and i just i just can't i just can't believe that they're where they are and it's just shocking like yeah it really is and uh, like what we we're saying, you know, didn't play off, and I don't really back any of these players to come together as a team and get a, a win against any of these teams in the first division. Like if you look over the years, and um, it's usually the first division team that ends up winning. Obviously, you have a, a few exceptions, like uh, Harps actually being drawn out the year before they came up. But um, like you know, momentum is a big thing in football, and when you have a team like a Galway or UCD who are winning loads of games in the row against a team that are low in confidence like in Doc, a team of individuals, like you said, does, you know, will they be able to, to bound together as a team and really, really fight? Because the playoffs are dirty. You know, it's a dirty grind. You have to be for the game. And to be honest, I don't see Dundalk really wanting the grind because you know, the team, you know, none of them have a love for Dundalk. They're there to pick a paycheck, like you said, does. And, you know, a few lucky ones are going to be able to get out of their contract out. And a few other ones will have to stay for another year and they'll probably mope around for another year until their contract is out. And that's a simple fact. And it's very sad, but, you know, like, I can't see any other way about it, to be honest with you. Yeah, like, the way that they brought in the players on like, two-year contracts, you know, um, they're like, the season has just gone, you know, you know yeah. it's gone really bad for them. It's just, it's really, it's really crazy, like, crazy business. And as you said, like, uh, you know, the signings came in when Perth when per- came back, you know, you're definitely not his signings, you know, and there's there's no two ways about it. But uh yeah, just basically it's just it's really it's really crazy to you know to, to think of what of the way the way it's all panned out. My you next know? question um for you Ushin actually just on Dundalk itself is if you look at division one like Sherburne are running away with that league, they're flying high at the top, they're scoring lots of goals every week. If you look at Treaty United, they're scoring lots of goals every week. If you look at UCD they scored four goals during the week and then Galway who were in second like our full time outfit, they play attacking football, they keep clean sheets and they score lots yes. of goals. Like if you were looking at this, like do you think you'd back one of them teams to beat them back in the playoff game? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and the way that the way that, you know the first division's going as well, it's, it's heating up in the playoff places. You know, you've seen Cork going on now and so on. 
I mean, I definitely, yeah, the way the way the Dundalk are going, you know, definitely over two legs, I could I could see the the, the first division team causing an upset, you know, and and, and getting promoted really. Um, in past years, I say Harps are really kind of the uh, how do you say it, playoff masters at this stage, you know, um, rarely rarely losing a playoff match. Yeah, um, but if if it's if it's Dundalk and the way that their season is going. You know, I couldn't. I can't put it past the first first division team we ever well, maybe. You know, well, to, surely, surely said it's going to go to Jamie Frickham. Surely, Jamie, you'd have to back Dundalk against a Shelburne, a Galway, or any of these teams. They're a Premier Division outfit. They're full time. They're players of thousands of your every week. Surely, Dundalk wouldn't lose over two legs to one of these teams in Division One at the top end of the league. Of course, but you you look at the squads. I think you'd say on paper Dundalk would be almost any every team in the league, and that hasn't happened. So. You know, it's impossible to say what level they're at, you know. And the teams around them are beating them, drawing with them. The teams above them are beating them. So we don't know what level they're at. We don't know if these teams in the first division are better than them. Like, it's impossible to know. And, you know, when we do find out, it might be too late for them, Doc. They might be going into a second leg, uh, one or two nil down. And, you know, we can't to dock their wage bill. They can't afford that. The Doc will be struggling as a club if they don't get Europe this year. Could you imagine the Doc's wage bill and the Doc's finances? If they go into the first division next year with no TV money, with no prize money, with no no chances of anything really, you know, nothing gets shown in the first division if we're being honest. And you know, I'd be very worried about the Dundalk fans. And you have to look, you know, you have to look from the from the youth academy to the the very people at the very very top because you know there's times like this. If Dundalk had a better youth academy, you'd be a bit more optimistic because you know if they do drop down, they have players coming through. But to be honest with you. They don't really uh, have a conveyor belt of talent, to be honest. They usually have to, to buy players in, and they're not going to be able to attract players in the first division. Let's just say that. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. I suppose, Oshin, like, you know, looking up, like, back at Waterford, they might a very, like, uh, we won't go into too much because we've talked about it a good few times on the show now. They've completely changed the form around. Burships came in, he's did a smashing, smashing job. They're banging form. I think it's only like one defeat in six games in Waterford. They've come up the league, they've got a lot of points. They're, not like they, they push themselves a, a good bit away from like relegation fears now. They're beating teams around them, they're keeping clean sheets, they're doing everything right, and I think they'll stay up. Yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah, and um, I mean, if you were to pick, pick either Dundalk or Waterford to go down, it would definitely be Dundalk at the current way, you know, or I can go down, you know, went to the ninth place. You know, I, I would, I would definitely, you know, it would be either between, you know, if Harps don't continue their form and you know, Waterford. Still in the round there, you know. I, I I'd definitely put put me put the, the hat on on Dundalk to, to go into that playoff. Um, which is it's actually mad, you know, to be saying that there when you know years gone by, you know, Dundalk would put four or five past Harps. You know, same at Waterford. It's just it really is. It's mental, you know, and it's been a crazy year in the world, and it's really just it's really hit the league Ireland as well. And you know, with uh, Dundalk, it's just a the mad story. I mean, if you were a fan that didn't actually follow the league Ireland. And say you yeah you heard they won the league and the cup a few years ago. And you go and tell them, oh, they're ninth place. They're battling for relegation. They look at you as if you had two heads. You know, it's just it's just mental. You know. Yeah, very right, true, Jamie. Do you want to talk us through um, Tim Clancy's comments that he's actually making about the referees, even just briefly? Yeah. Yeah. So Tim Clancy, uh, it's fair to say he wasn't too pleased with a uh, referee uh, in the the draw game against Lord Vigo. Um, he came out in an interview to, I think it was Loud FM, and he even said that he's thinking about leaving Drogheda um, with these refereeing decisions, which is crazy, you know. Of course, that might be for a headline, but, um, you know, it's crazy when thinking about And to be fair, you know, we say it almost every week. Re- managers are getting yellow cards. Where, where else do you see that? You know, we all watch the Premier League. It's very rare you see a, a manager yellow carded in the Premier League. And I say that, you know, every week we see two or three managers in the League of Ireland get carded. It's little, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, Holly yeah. Organ, yeah. Um, <laughs> and obviously, obviously, you look at um, the referees and Tim Clancy's point was that they want to be sent to the show every single week, whether it be uh, giving managers red, yellow, and red, yellow and red cards or, uh, you know, these crazy decisions like with uh, Wordsworth of Waterford, you know, it's crazy. And this is Tim Clancy's comments. He said, um, I guess Derek Tomley in the draw game against Finn Harps, uh, Chris Lyons 
apparently slipped coming out of the pitch from the dressing room. And Tommy's comments were, uh, don't start diving until you get on the pitch. So you have to think that that's crazy. That's crazy. Um, and, and if that is true, you know, there has to be a review here. This yes. can't go on. It's every week there's a refereeing decision that makes us all scratch our heads. And, you know, Tim Clancy has a point. We saw Bertram obviously talk about it a few weeks ago. We see Ollie Horgan talk about it. Um, and, you know, nothing really happens. So it's up to the managers and the players to probably take stand. But, you know, they're held um, at the top. It's very, very hard for the players and the managers to really appeal any of this because, obviously, referees are direct employees of the FAI and you have to appeal to the FAI. So then you, you look at it and, you know, they can't really win, to be honest. But mm. it's a joke and there's, there has to be something done. It's happening every week. Oshin. Drada nil, Sligo nil, Sligo are third, they've got 39 points, and Drada are sixth with 34 points, and nil nil, clean sheet, even Stevens. What do you make of this game? Yeah, well, it's hard to believe it, that, you know, the, the, the run that Sligo are on, um, yeah, the Carps have beat them, um, I think, uh, and Bowes, I think, have beat them, and, you know, like, it's it's hard to believe that they're still in third place, um, they've managed to, you know, stay hold of the third place. Now I thought, you know, going into this match here, um, Sligo will be a good opportunity for Sligo to uh, you know, cement that place in third because you have Bowes, you know, two places behind and they are chasing as well. Bowes a few few games, uh, you know, games in hand so on for Europe and you know, I was thinking that, you know, hopefully that well, well for Sligo's sake, you know, they get a, a win and get back on track because they've been on a really rotten run, knocked out of the cup by Cork and so on. Um, so yeah, I'd say you know I don't know what's going on with Sligo. They obviously brought in Andrew Wright, um, but I was kind of you know looking from the outside, it looked like a dull game um, between the two sides. Um, in regards to Drogheda, I think Drogheda are happy where they are. You know, coming in, coming up from the first division last year, mid table at the minute. I'd say they'd be happy enough. You know, a few a few wins in a row, they could even sneak into Europe. Who knows? We'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, I'd say just overall a dull affair. Um, I'd say Sligo, you know, they're, they're probably hoping to get back on track sooner rather than later because they will fall out of that third, that fourth or third place they hold the minute because, as I said already, the, the games in hand that Bowes have and Derry also have one game in hand against, you know, Bowes that were, was meant to be on on Friday. So, yeah. Definitely, yeah. And Jamie, I suppose, you know, like Sligo of the um, like four games, no, sorry, two games in hand is what Sligo have as well. So, obviously, you know, if, if they get a few more wins on the table, probably will keep the European position. But I think when you've got games in hand and other teams don't start around you, it kind of puts you in a position of, you know, fire. Like, you know, you're under pressure. You have to win to keep your position where you are. Whereas teams have played their games out. If they are where they are, they're not going to get any better. They're not going to get any worse. But if you have games to play, like, you know, other teams are catching up, you need to start getting more points on the board and turning these nil nils into one nils. Yeah, and... Um... Obviously, Andre Wright was brought in to score goals, and um, us Lego fans probably won't want me to say this, but I think Andre Wright almost relies on two really, really good goal scoring winners. Well, I'm sure, Daz, you might agree with this. You know, if you had Danny Grant and Twardek, and you Definitely. look at how, how wide it's Lego, and they obviously got rid of Gibson. They um, have Figuera, who's you know, a bit of a lazy player, in my opinion. He maybe doesn't track back and run them extra years that Danny Grant and Twardek were at both. And then um, I've even talked to Sligo fans and they're saying maybe Romeo Parks out wide. And for me, that's a no. I wouldn't do that at all. But um, Andre Roy, he needs players to play off. And I don't think they have that at Sligo. And, you know, the transfer window is practically over. I can see them bringing in anyone else. And, you know, I'd want to worry uh, where the goal is going to come from. And as well now, another problem, even the bigger problem in my opinion, is Bulger's out. He's meant to be back now, and he still wasn't back. So you have to look, you know, why did Sligo ever Seymour? Seymour's doing a great job at Parks, and he would have slotted in very, very well in the border position right now. I'm and sure. Too soft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, but definitely. Like, they have um, Morahan in the middle and Colley in the middle, and they're just not doing it. They're not creating the chances. And we saw in this game against Draw that it was a slow quest. It was, you know, you could have sat down, fell asleep, and you wouldn't have missed anything. And you know, there's nothing that went on the game, and you'd expect uh, Sligo being a team that are in Europe to really bring the game to Drogheda, who obviously aren't in the best form, outside of one or two good results, but they didn't do it, and 
Um, it's just, you know, when you still go on a great run, they sort of took their foot off the pedal and you, you need to, to get a little bit of something from somewhere. They really want to keep up with the top two when they can't really see happening, to be honest. Definitely, Jamie. Yeah, I suppose, like Oshin, I, I think Drada and Zlego collectively are both having very good seasons. I think they're both, you know, at a level in their table where probably a lot of people mightn't have tipped them to be where they are. Obviously, Sligo's third. They're doing very, very well. They're having a great season. Obviously, form's been a bit up and down lately, but ultimately, overall, as a team, they're doing terrific. And Drada are only five points behind them, albeit Sligo of games in hand. But as the table presently stands, they are only five points behind them. Their recruitment was smart. They brought in a few good players. They've got a good team, and they're six in the table. What was brilliant for them? Yeah, that's it. Drogheda really did do well, you know, before the before the season started. They have a balance. Obviously, they brought in Gary Deegan, you know, and the Dan O'Reilly in there, and you know, they brought in kind of a balance of youth and. And you know, season pros like, and they done pretty well. Um, with the side of things, so um, yeah, they've if they they really uh, you know, firstly speaking, they've done very well, and they may may, may have maybe overachieved, overachieve really. Um, they're really a tough team to beat in in, in United Park or head in the game park as is known this season. Um, so yeah, no, I'd say they'll be happy where they are. Um, regards to Sligo, it's another point. Um, I'm just really. I'd be, I'd if you know if, if Stego weren't weren't to pick up a few more wins, you know, I'd be I'd be worried for for uh, Buckley's job. To be honest, I mean they've lost you know a lot of games now and you know if not through the cup. I mean, or if they didn't start you know getting their act together to keep themselves in Europe, although as you mentioned they do have two games in hand, you know they could be people fans could start to call for for Buckley's head, but you, do, you just don't know. See how it pans out. I think it'd be very harsh for any fans to be calling for Buckley's head with the job he's done. He's came in, he's got his third. I think they're doing very, very well this season. Um, Jamie, Oshin, that was absolutely brilliant. Thanks so much for coming on. Uh, if you're new to the channel, please make sure you subscribe. Please like the video. And please make sure you check out the Finn Harp Supporters Group on Facebook. There are a Facebook group, like Oshin said, he manages the page. So that was brilliant. Thanks very much, lads. Cheers, Cheers. Cheers Oshin. Cheers.